Hello, everyone. Hey dudes, can you hear me? Could you please um, write plus in the chat if you he can hear me and if you watch me? Okay, great. Okay, so we'll start in about two minutes. Um, yeah, Arnold is uh, asking, will this recording be available afterwards? Uh, yep, uh, we are recording this session. Uh, you gotta, here's a notice before <laughs> when you're entered the room. And yep, uh, we'll share this uh, recording after the webinar. All of you ought to get an email with the recording. Okay, guys. Um, <clears throat> if uh, anybody is <laughs> join us later, so they will join us uh, in the middle <laughs> of the story. So. First of all, my name is Nick, and I'm glad to see you here. And uh, today, um, I'll show you how to build a kind of a customer dashboard using UI Bakery application, and uh, how to create a customer dashboard on top of the SQL database. We will be using MySQL database in this case, and uh, our webinar will be in two parts, like. First of all, I'll show you how to build a dashboard and do all the queries like um, selecting data from the database, doing multiple tables, filtering, grouping, ordering, and other stuff using SQL queries, how to do that efficiently. And then I'll show you how your bakery can help you to do almost the same operations, but without SQL queries and just using our UI only, okay? So <clears throat> as you can see my screen, I hope, uh, you can let me know in chat if everything is okay with my screen. Uh, so here is a customer dashboard we'll be building here, okay? So first of all, here's a customer's table that will show us um, a list of the customers from my database. And here is a customer's orders table that will show us how to build joining, grouping, and other stuff. A bunch of filtering functionality here, like I can search for users here, and uh, an ability to do an ordering based on orders count, like discounting ordering, as you can see here. Um, numbers going into discounting order, and we can switch it to the asking in order, so we can build ordering using SQL here. Okay. So let's start, and I'll show you how to build such an application. So first of all, I'm going to the UI Bakery. I have a few projects here already. And here I can create a project. Let's call it Customer Dashboard. Okay. 
Here we have a bunch of different templates that can help you creating your applications, not from scratch, but from the predefined set of different components with filtering, grouping, and with connected data sources to these uh, dashboards. But now I'm choosing just a blank template. Okay, and here I have a blank canvas where I can start building my application. But first of all, I add a connected data. So I'm going here at the left sidebar, I'm choosing the data sources tab where I can connect a new data source. So here I'm just pressing connect button, choosing this MySQL data source. I'll call it customers, just customers. And here, let me put my credentials here. It's my host of my customers database, a username, password, and a database. Then I can just check a connection. Everything is okay. I can connect database, and my database is connected. So as you can see here, you have to just understand the structure of my database, and here are tables um, that you have bakery uh, read from the database. So first of all, here's a customer's table and here are columns in my customer's table. We'll be using this table to do uh, in our today's webinar. Also, we'll be using an orders table uh, just to show how to build a grouping and joining on top of two tables, like customer's table and orders table. Um, okay. So now to start building, I'm going to the components tab. So here I can start building some application. And here, first of all, I had to open my actions panel. So this panel is responsible for the actions. Actions are entities in UI Bakery that allows you to do data manipulations. So here I can create a new action. I'll call it, um, so I've created an action. It will be a SQL query action. We have multiple different types of different actions, but we'll be using just SQL query action for now, uh, just uh, to show you how to build everything using SQL. Okay, and it will be select everything from the customers table. Here I can press run action button, when, wait until it's done and take a look at the result stuff. And as you can see here, here I have the data loaded from my database. Okay, well, let me call it customers action. Um, okay, now I can just go to the components panel and add a table. And table is successfully added on the screen. I'll make it a bit bigger. And as you can see here, table just understood that I have a selected customers action and it's just automatically generated a beautiful structure from the data this action provides. It just understood what are names, as a strings, what are phones, what are address lines, what are states available here and so forth. And as you can see here, the customer's action is assigned to this table in the data tab. So I can assign any action data here and then press generate structure and to regenerate the table structure based on the data provided from the action. Okay, let's just add a small hidden here. I'll call it customers. And okay, here we have a small dashboard right now. Okay, now let's move to the more complex queries. I'll create a one more action. I'll use a SQL query action type again. And here I have already prepared a, a SQL query that will do the following. So it will select some specific data from my customer's table, like a customer first name, city, and its credit limit. And also it will join the orders table on customer number, okay? And it will group all the records there by customer number. So I'll be able to count the number of orders each customer did, okay? So let me run this action. It's executed. As you can see here, now I have a data that shows me how many orders each customer did, okay? With the data, with the information about this customer. Okay, I'll call it customers orders. And I definitely 
have to add one more table here with the customer's orders. Okay. So again, a table is added. The structure is generated for this table automatically. And here I want to add one more heading that will tell us that it's a customer's orders. Okay, cool. Now we have a complex query that groups the data from multiple tables using SQL. Okay. <clears throat> Now, what if uh, I want to add some sort of filtering here? To do so, first of all, I add, add an input, just a plain text input box. It will be with a placeholder like enter customer name. Okay. And then add, add um built of uh, like filtering functionality here in this query. So what am I doing here? I'm just setting a having statement, just having name like, um, like my new added input and value. So what am I did here? I've added a having statement that will allow the SQL to search for the data that's, um, that will be like the value inside this input. Okay, well, let me just maybe let me call it somewhere. Mm, let's call it customer name filter. Okay, so it's renamed here automatically. And also, each time when this input value is changed, I would uh, re trigger this query to reload the data inside the customer's orders table. So on each change, I'll call this customer's order uh, action. Okay, let's take a look, how does it work? For instance, I wanna search for a Peter. Okay, Peter's here. Maybe we need a student. Okay, it works. So as you can see here, each time I'm changing the value of this customer name filter input box, these uh, customer's order query is uh, reloaded and new data is downloaded from the MySQL database. Okay, cool. Um, the next step is add a bit of ordering. Okay, so here I just want to add a select box that will allow me to perform ordering based on the orders count. So let's first of all add a select box here. Okay, and also here I add uh, two options. First of all, we need a, a scanning. The value will be ask and a descanning. Well, you will then ask. And also the default uh, sorting order is ascending, so the value will be asking here. And here I would just want to add the same. Uh, trigger functionality. So each time I'm changing the value of this select box, I will re-trigger the customer's order action and my query will be reloaded. But to perform an order in here, add, add one more line of the SQL. So add, add uh, order by uh, orders count. So orders count is the orders field that we've created when grouped two tables together. And the value of the orders count um, will be, oh, pardon me, let me call it properly, like uh, ordered by, let's say. So it will be UI dot order by dot value. Okay, uh, let's take a look at how does it work. Now, let me choose a discounting order here. And the data is reloaded. And as you can see, orders are uh, orders are in uh, this kind of order here. Yep. And when I'm choosing an ask and in order, everything is reverted and now orders are from the smallest one to the biggest one. Okay, great. So now we have a pretty big dashboard with a pretty much functionality. Uh, let's add a one more feature here that I didn't show you before. So for instance, I want to make these lines in this customer's table editable. 
So I want to add a functionality that it will allow me to change the customer name um, directly from this table. So first of all, I'm selecting the table, then go into the Appearance Install tab, and here I can enable an edit action. This beautiful pencil appears here. So when I'm clicking on this action, um, <clears throat> and you just um, like uh, the row becomes editable, and I can change some something here, press on the apply button, and everything will be updated. But to do so, I have to add one more action here. I have to add on edit row action. So I'm pressing just add new action. New action here, it will be also a SQL query action. So what will it be? So it will be an update on customers table action. It will set a customers that customer name equals to the customers table on edited row edited through new data, and we will use a customer name field here. But we don't want to update all the customers with a new name, with this new name, but we have to update one specific customer. So I'm adding a where statement for customers, customer number. So all our customers are identified by the customer number. Uh, will be equal to the, oh, just let me just copy this part. We identify it as a customer's table, edit it through new data, and here I'll choose a customer number. Okay. So uh, let me rename it. So it will be update customer. And let's take a look at how does it work. So I'm going here, for instance, the first customer, customer's name is Dmitry. Let me call it Nick. And I'm pressing the apply button. The query is loaded and update operation is performed and everything's cool. So as you can see here, we've just an updated uh, customer inside the MySQL database using SQL query and data is reloaded and put inside the customer's table. Okay, so great, everything works. Um, maybe guys, you have uh, some more questions about this stuff. If you have any questions, just don't hesitate, put them in chat and uh, I'll reply all of them a bit later. Okay, if you have no questions right now, then let's move on. So now I just wanna show you how to build almost the same functionality, but without SQL queries and using just your bakery additional UI actions. So first of all, I'm going to the pages tab. Here I'll add one more page that will be called like um, customer's dashboard. Let's call it without SQL. Okay, I'm adding one more page. Okay. On this page, we'll build a separate dashboard without SQL. So first of all, again, we need an action that will load the data from the database. But right now I'm not using a SQL query action because UI Bakery provides us with a set of you know, like, a crudel operations like we have a set of actions that allows us to load table from the database load specific row create rows update rows delete rows and so forth but right now first of all i have to add a load table action that will use a customer's data source again and resource it will be customers so it will load all the data from the customer's table I can press run action again, take a look at the result and all the data is loaded as we've seen before using SQL queries, but now it's without SQL queries. Okay, great. So now let's go back to the components and add a table here. I'll make it a bit bigger and add a customer's heading. So it's customer's table. Okay. Great, now let's go back to the components. Um, now I just wanna add a functionality that allows me to perform a search across all these customers based on their names. So I'm just looking for an input component. I'll put it here. 
again, it will be our customer name. Um, and this input component on each change of value inside this input component. So when you're typing here, again, you'll have to re-trigger the um, load customers action. So it's our customers action that loads the data without SQL. And uh, now the last step I want to add here is that to add a filtering functionality. So the table provides us with a filtering functionality. So I can just press to add filter button. And here we'll search for all the customers where customer's name will be like something in the UI.input.value. So I'm referencing the value of this enter customer name input field. Okay, let's take a look at how does it work. So again, maybe we need somebody. Okay, let's search for Nick. Okay, Nick's here. Maybe we need to ban. Okay, he also is here. Okay, so searching functionality works. Cool. Now let's take a look on how to build an editing functionality without SQL. So again, first of all, I'm selecting the table, then go into the parents tab and enabling edit actions. That is here. And now we need to add one more action. Let's call it update customers uh, without SQL. And using an update true action step, again, customer's data source, customer resource. What will we do here? So first of all, we have to configure which records will be updated. So we will select the customer, uh, which customer's number is equal to the edited customer. So I'm choosing a customer number here. Uh, operation will be equals. And I'm seeking, so it's a customer, let's call it customer's table without SQL. Okay, so it will be something like UI, the customer's table without SQL, dot editor true, dot new data, dot customer number. Okay, and what will we do here? We'll update a customer name, yep. And we'll put data from the editor true uh, from our table. So it will be customer name. Okay, it will have to work right now. And after that, when the action is created, I'm just returning back to the customers table, going to the triggers action and selecting this update customer without SQL action in the on edit trigger. So it will be triggered each time when I'm pressing the check mark here. Okay, let's try to rename the first customer. So it's his nick here. Let's call it Dimitri back. And I'm pressing onto the submit action, and yeah, it works. So it's just reload the data without SQL. Okay. So as you can see now, uh, almost everything that we just made using SQL queries can be done using with or without SQL queries. Yeah, it partially limited. Some stuff can't be done using our Bakery UI actions. But most of the required functionality that you're doing all the time can be done easily and much faster without SQL queries, but using UI Bakery, just additional actions. Okay. So, frankly speaking, that's it. If you have any questions, please uh, just put them into the chat and I'll try to reply them. Okay. And here, first of all, I have one more question. So Arnold asks, so are component styles editable? Uh, I would say the default component styles are not editable, just because we're trying to provide a pretty good uh, UI kit that will looks great almost on all devices and so forth. Um, but some specific stuff like uh, editing colors of tags, or text color and other stuff can be edited easily. So for instance, I don't know, let's say we have a state uh, column here. I'll go to the options and I can stay, change the color of this option. 
and some other stuff. Okay. But uh, the general look and feel of your application can be changed by default. Okay. So maybe, guys, you have any more questions? Okay. If you have no more questions, um, then I'm finishing that stuff. So thank you for visiting our webinar. Uh, I hope it was useful for you. And um, I would say uh, all this uh, webinar stuff, so the recording will be sent to you by email tomorrow. So if you didn't get some stuff, oh, Okay, so here we have a, one more question, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, could you share here some of those SQL scripts? Um, yeah, I can share it with you, but will it be okay for you if I'll just add them to the email that will be sent to you later uh, with the recording? I don't think that's a good idea to share the SQL scripts across the Zoom chat. It will be hard <laughs> to guess what's going on there, I bet. Okay, so Leonardo, uh, we'll send you uh, such SQL scripts and I hope uh, you'll find them useful. Um, okay, then big thanks everybody. Just join our next webinars and just have a good day. Bye guys.